we're actually seeing a target price that's over one trillion dollar based strictly on energy. If you notice that, if you, if you take a look at the Kathy Wood and the whole Ark Invest, hey, what's up, everybody? What's up, Ben? What's up, Ben? Hey, Brian. What's up, JJ? So if you take a look at the um, Ark Invest model and you see the valuation there is extremely high, but that valuation is almost entirely based on the automotive industry and robo taxis. This is one of the first ones that's based on a trillion dollar valuation, but going just strictly on energy. Check this out. So this is from a, a Canaccord Genuity, and this is from Jed Dorsheimer. I hope I didn't butcher his name. So he writes, while rich, we also believe Tesla holds a several year lead and is now expanding aggressively into storage and thus fill our multiple is warranted. Now, check this out. Um, we believe large cap investments to increase battery production capacity will begin to pay off in 2022 as Giga Tectus and Berlin cell production starts. Tesla has positioned itself as the brand in energy, which is, I agree, 100%. And uh, as its solar and energy storage products and supply constraints are removed, consumers will be able to become more entrenched in its electrification, electrification ecosystem. So essentially, a lot of uh, a lot of verbiage there. But let me just summarize that in simple English for you guys. So because I wanted to keep this video to 10 minutes max. What this uh, valuation, what this target price, whatever you want to call it, by this company is saying is something extremely simple. They're saying that Tesla is a $1 trillion company based solely on their energy business. Essentially, what they're saying here is that Tesla is so far ahead in storage, distribution, and even production, even though I'll give you the fact that solar panels are still not there yet. But they're so far ahead of everybody else as far as creating a, creating like an ecosystem with network effects with their energy business. And if you don't believe me, just ask Apple, who just bought their stuff for their solar farm. I mean, Apple uh, have just pretty much admitted that this is true. So Tesla is so far ahead in the energy business. Imagine if you are a homeowner right now, you can get their stuff and reduce your electricity bill. As simple as that. You know, produce electricity at night use it at peak hours. That's that's doable today. That's why they're growing over 100% quarter over quarter with the sales of the uh, of the of the residential products. But this is just another proof that Tesla is so much undervalued if you take into consideration the fact that their energy business is the biggest multiple uh, way way beyond what they can actually achieve in cars. I think in the energy business they're going to disrupt the entire industry. Uh, I completely agree. Hey, good morning everybody. Um, so I really like this. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description of the video once I post it for this article. Uh, and I agree. But for me, just like, hey, welcome to the party. We've been here for a good part. I want to say two, two and a half years. We've been talking about Tesla energy. And now more mainstream outlets, more, more mainstream uh, uh, analysts are joining the party. So welcome. But we knew this all along. So good to hear other uh, accomplished uh, um um, uh, people are actually talking about Tesla Energy. The other part I want to talk to you about is what's going on with Coinbase. Uh, Coinbase is uh, IPOing, uh, I believe, tomorrow. And this is uh, really interesting. I'm about to share this article from Seeking Alpha. I want you guys to check it out. Hey, Drago, what's up? What's up, Mark? So I want to share something interesting. This is an article from Seeking Alpha. And this shows that the futures that currently are trading um, for the Coinbase IPO tomorrow showing that the valuation of the company is probably going to be around 150 billion dollars yeah and um, that's basically an estimate at this point but just to give you some uh, points of consideration if you take a look at this year um basically based on the deals that were done privately uh, for the past uh, 30 days between current shareholders they were selling at about 300 dollars a pop and that's representing a 67 billion valuation so the valuation of Coinbase is essentially, that's what this article is saying. The valuation of Coinbase went from 68 billion to 150 billion in two weeks. Now, I don't completely disagree with the fact that Coinbase is a really great uh, company with a really great idea. It's the future. It's innovative. I absolutely love Coinbase. But for me personally, it's a little bit scary when I see something goes from, uh, not from 10 to 20, goes from 68 to 150 billion in two weeks with nothing fundamentally changing. It's a little bit intimidating. It's a little bit frothy to me. I'm not saying Coinbase is bad and you shouldn't buy. That's your own thing. Do whatever you want. But I'm saying it kind of feels a little bit frothy. Um, it's including this story also. I'm going to show you another article from Seeking Alpha. And you know me. I'm a bull. 
uh, I like Bitcoin, but here's this other article from Seeking Alpha that Bitcoin just went up to $63,000. $63,000 for Bitcoin. Um, that's a that's a four percent in a day, in a day. Um, so here's the thing, and I spoke about this on my live stream yesterday. And again, I'm I'm extremely bullish on Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin will eventually go into the hundreds, um, 150, 200. Who knows where it's going to stop? But it's going to be a very bumpy, very long ride. So I love Bitcoin. I think it's going way higher eventually. Um, there might be a, a bad winter <laughs> for for Bitcoin. Who knows? Uh, it's going to be extremely bumpy. But when I see this, it kind of reminds me of the conversation I had with Trey Taylor yesterday, which is essentially that we're having this greater full theory inside Bitcoin. Because unlike a company, when you hold a share of Tesla, for example, that's a company that's producing some sort of a service or a product, right? Bitcoin isn't really producing anything. The only reason you would buy Bitcoin is because you would think somebody else will buy it off you at a higher price. So that's essentially the whole business model is based on the greater full theory. However, if I want to counter that argument and defend Bitcoin, I'm just going to say something very simple. Same thing with art. Why do people buy expensive art? You know, just based on the hopes of somebody else will repurchase it at a higher price in 10 or 15 years. Now, with art, you actually can enjoy and appreciate the painting. But most of these rich assholes who buy these paintings, they keep them in the safe. They don't enjoy these. So, you know, say whatever it is you want about Bitcoin. I believe it's a little bit overvalued. It needs a little bit of correction. The Coinbase IPO is completely out of control. But it's a good industry. It's the future. It's eventually going way higher. So I wouldn't be extremely terrified. But I believe a correction for Bitcoin is in the cards. Uh, hey, shout out for Croatia. <laughs> um, Somebody saying Bitcoin, BitConnect. I don't think it's a scam, uh, to be honest. Um, also, I want to show you something else. And uh, you guys hate it when I say I told you so. But if you remember the Alibaba story when it came out, I told you that the next move, it ain't over. In my video about Alibaba, I told you, hey, guys, this Alibaba thing isn't over yet. And the next move is essentially going to be uh, 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 the Chinese government telling Ant Group to uh, basically dismantle. So... In this article, they're talking about something really simple. So uh, I'm not going to go through this entire verbiage, but essentially what the Chinese authorities are asking Alibaba and Ant Group is to essentially uh, subject Ant Group, completely restructure Ant Group, and subject it uh, to regulation under the Chinese government as a financial institution, which is what Jack Ma was fighting against. So, hey, Kate, thank you so much for being purposely awake. <laughs> I appreciate it. And thank you so much for that. Uh, so uh, I just want to tell you guys that I anticipated this. I told you that essentially what's going to happen, the Chinese government are not done with uh, Alibaba. They're going to carve out Ant. I said it in my video three or four days ago, and now it's announced yesterday. So I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. But it doesn't seem to affect the Alibaba stock at all. The Alibaba stock is soaring all the way. I don't know where it's going to stop. I have my own moral issues of investing in Chinese companies, which I don't want to do personally. But I think Alibaba is on the way up. It might hit 260, 270, 280. Who knows? At this point, wow. And nobody knows. Thank you so much. Love your channel, Tom. Like what you curse and stuff. <laughs> Thank you for that. I try to do that less. Now, uh, for the final, final story of the day, I want to give you guys a little bit of explanation about the Warren Buffett indicator. There's been a lot of talk about the Warren Buffett indicator. Now, for those of you who are not familiar about what the Warren Buffett indicator is, I'm going to give you a quick introduction, uh, and then I'm going to explain to you what this thing really means, and is it actually that bad? So let me explain. I'm going to pull myself back on the screen again. So check this out. The Warren Buffett indicator, which everybody now is talking about because of Elon and Kathy, it's now in the news, it's a very simple comparable. It's a, it's like a, a, it's a ratio. It's a ratio that compares what the total valuation of the entire U.S. public companies, which is something very high, compared to the entire shit that the U.S. economy generates as far as services and goods. And that comparable in itself is meaningless because it doesn't really say anything. But if you go back in time and you compare what the ratio was five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, 30 years ago, theoretically, you can see when the market is overvalued based on previous historical ratios. So for example, if we used to make pretty much one-to-one -one goods and services versus the stock market valuation of the entire companies, one-to-one, and now we're two-to-one, basically it means that right now we can infer that the market is overvalued. That's the theory of this. Um, now, uh, you can call it the Warren Buffett indicator. You can call it, there's a lot of names for this. It's nothing new. However, um, I want to make an argument here, which I really want to explain here. I don't feel I did a good job of it in my previous video. 
why this indicator is no longer relevant and why this overvaluation isn't as bad as the indicator makes people think. Now, I'll give you the fact that the market is overvalued, that the stocks are extremely high. And however, it's not as bad as the Warren Buffett indicator shows. And I'll explain in a minute. And then we're going to wrap up the video. Why? So here's the thing. When you compare uh, the GDP that we have today, which is the gross domestic product, which is goods and services that we generate in the US, to what we generated in 1985, it's not the same number because in 1985, all US companies were essentially keeping their GDP in the US. How do you know how much GDP we have? We know it based on the tax reporting system. We know this number not because companies volunteer to let us know, it's because they file tax returns. And from these tax returns, the IRS can generate the GDP numbers. So back in the 80s, uh, what companies used to do, they either would pay tax in the US on their entire global income, or they would cheat and lie and you know put stuff in Cayman Islands, offshore and nonsense like this. That was very binary. Now what happened in the last 15 years and moreover in the last 10 years, Corporations have developed a legal loophole, a legal system to drive profits outside the U.S. to other countries. That is called transfer pricing. Essentially, what companies would do, and I'm talking about massive companies, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, all of the huge companies, all of the medium-sized companies, what they would do, and they've been doing this actively for the last 15 years, they would set up a company in, in a country with a better tax system, let's say Ireland, Switzerland, there's a lot of examples, right? And they would actually set up a company there, buy buildings, hire employees, do a lot of activity in this country. I'm not saying they're faking it by no means. They really set up massive operations in this company. And what they do, they would transfer their intellectual property and they say, well, we're selling it to this Irish company right now, or we're selling it to the Swiss company. So now our brains, the main profit generator for our company is located somewhere in Switzerland or in Ireland, right? That's why we, the US company, should be paying a small percentage of the entire revenues because the revenues should be attributable to that company in Switzerland Ireland that now owns our IP. And we actually validated with transfer pricing studies that support that. So basically, I would say, according to my own estimates, we're probably looking at 30 to 40% of US GDP erosion that went overseas in the past 15 years. So the GDP numbers we're having now are completely uncomparable to the GDP numbers we had in 1984, 85. So you can't compare that and basically say, well, look at the GDP numbers to a market cap right now. They're insane. No, it's a complete, it's a comparing apples and oranges or much rather apples and cars, no relation whatsoever. And that's kind of the point I wanted to make because a lot of, um, a lot of you have been asking me what do I mean about transfer pricing. So I want to explain um, why a lot of U.S. companies basically have completely skewed the GDP numbers because a lot of U.S. tax dollars are going overseas for the past 15 years legally. And um, there's been a lot of attempts to stop it by um, various legislation such as the BEPS or BEPS basically saying, well, um, we'll look at the actual uh, place where you actually generate most of your profits and whatever. But it, for the most part, it has not been successful. Uh, we still have a lot of offshore and, 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 and external outside US profit centers that actually drive a lot of these GDP numbers. Um, so I just wanted to explain that to you guys. Um, thank you, Lorenzo, I appreciate it. It's tough, it's a tough point to, to, to clarify, um, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand um, the, actual, the actual numbers here. So I don't, want, I don't wanna keep this video more than 15 minutes long. I just wanna give you the main news, the test evaluation numbers coming out the Alibaba and Ant News, the Coinbase, the Bitcoin, and of course, the Warren Buffett Indicator. Thank you so much for everybody for waking up so early. Shout out to the 800 people in the chat right now. I can't believe it. It's so early. Uh, if you're watching this on a replay, thank you so much. Don't smash nothing. Don't hit nothing. Don't like nothing. Just watch the video and enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.